In this video, we're going to learn to list fractions in order from smallest to largest without using the common denominator strategy, but instead thinking about benchmarks. Benchmark fractions are easy fractions that help us make a reference point to know where, or comparing fractions, to know whether they come before or after their benchmarks. For example, if I made a number line, I would say the beginning is 0, the end is 1, and the middle is 1 half. These are all benchmarks. In this lesson, we're going to list the fractions 8 tenths, 3 eighths, and two-fourths in order. Now let's take a look at what we know about each fraction. In eight-tenths, ten is our whole, and there are eight pieces of that whole that we're speaking about. In three-eighths, there are eight pieces in our whole, and three of those pieces are being represented in our fraction. And two-fourths, there are four pieces in our whole, and two of those pieces are being represented in our fraction. Let's look at eight-tenths. Would eight-tenths be closer to zero, one-half, or one? Well, Let's look at our denominator 10. We know that half of 10 is 5. So 8 tenths would be larger, much larger than 1 half. It would actually be a lot closer to 1. Let's look at 3 eighths. Our denominator, which is our whole 8, is what we should look at first. Half of 8 is 4. So this fraction is less than one-half. Three-eighths would fall on our number line somewhere around here. Let's look at our last one, two-fourths. Two-fourths, well, let's look at our, new, our denominator. Half of four is two. Our numerator is two. So therefore, two-fourths would be equivalent to one-half and fall right here on our number line. So by thinking about our benchmark 0, 1 half, and 1, we've already listed our fractions in order. First we have 3 eighths, then 2 fourths, and last 8 tenths. To write that in a neater way for a test, we could list them after showing our work on our number line. 3 eighths, 2 fourths, and 8 tenths. Think about these benchmark strategies as an excellent strategy that saves you a little bit of time as opposed to using common denominators. However, when the fractions are very similar or very close and you can't recognize how close they are to your benchmarks, common denominators is still an excellent strategy. You have to use your own judgment and think about what strategy works best for you on the specific problem that you're working.